So um, I was asked today to lead a discussion, essentially, on the opportunities for law and policy to affect change on the ground. And um, this is all about how to get your green infrastructure plans built. That's sort of the subtitle that I put on the session. Now, um, Kim identified that uh, Kevin and Derek uh, kindly provided me with some questions uh, that were on at the forefront of their minds um, as I was thinking about how to restructure the way I do my presentations. Um, but I did want to say that I actually have more considerably uh, the stuff that they gave me into more generic questions and any resemblance, <coughs> anything resembling Courtney is purely <coughs> coincidental. So um, let's, let's take it from there. Um, these are intended to be sort of general uh, themes that hopefully will resonate with you. Um, previously when I've done presentations, I really have focused on the legal tools without, um, and then worked from the legal tool to how you might apply it. And this is sort of flipping that upside down to say, I've got this problem, what can I do in terms of the solution? So, <coughs> moving forward. So, um, the idea here is, uh, and it's really the theme of today, is that many of you will have sort of uh, your plans on how you're going to go green in your community. And I hope and trust that that is what a lot of you are aspiring to. Um, that's sort of the theme of today's conversation. But the real problem that we're confronted with often is this gap between what you plan and then sort of where it ends up. Often things don't end up being quite as good as you originally conceived, and there's a million reasons why that sometimes happens. Um, different ways that things work, uh, you know, failure to have uh, thought things through ahead of time, uh, lack of money, lack of buy-in by all the players, etc. cetera. Um, so that's the focus of our discussion this afternoon, and I really do hope um, that you will engage in a conversation. We're really interested in hearing what your thoughts are and whether stuff rings true or you know, whether you've got examples that come to bear on that. So how to get all the actors singing from the same song, song sheet, that's, that's the challenge. Um, and when I say all of the actors, I mean everybody within the municipality, the municipality vis-a-vis -vis the province, the development community, um, the sub-trades that are within the development community because you have uh, an array of who is the development community as well. Uh, you've got the consultants that are advising them, and on and on it goes, the politicians. Um, there's a huge array of people that impact on the development cycle. But you're, we're all trying uh, to start with some of, as Kim said this morning, start with all the small pieces to get the big picture kind of drawn and come together. So, um, yeah, I, I invite you to talk about your stories, addressing what sort of successes as well as challenges you've had, um, if anything that I say, and I am going to be working thematically uh, on these issues uh, this afternoon, and uh, we can also go beyond these issues. It's not limited to these issues, but this is where uh, we happen to cast uh, the beginning of the discussion, just to get things going. I'm also following, if we get through all these slides, I'm also going to be talking very briefly about some of the incentive tools that are available, um, that uh, particularly under Bill 27, so uh, within the framework of Local Government Act and Community Charter. And finally, I will be introducing you to a commentary piece um, that was originally prepared in the context of uh, Vancouver's Liquid Waste, Man Waste Management Plan, but has now been uh, uh, made more generic for application across the province that speaks to the challenge of really integrating all of the different tools that you have to bear <coughs> to achieve your community's goals. And that commentary is actually um, going to be explored further in seminar number three on November 21st. 